Alright, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be finishing off the Dinosaur Tribal uh, Historic Brawl thingamajig. We're going to be playing Gishath. We've played Zakama before. Zakama, I would say, is definitely the better uh, commander in Naya, and the better dinosaur commander in Arena, essentially. Because I think dinosaurs are pretty mediocre, unfortunately. But there is some fun stuff that can be had with our good old commander. So let's get into it, shall we? Gishath, Sun's Avatar. Five, red, green, and white for a 7-6 Vigilant Trampling Haste. When Gishath, Sun's Avatar deals combat damage to a player, you reveal that many cards from the top of your library and put any number of dinosaur cards from among them onto the battlefield, the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So there's a little bit of RNG Jesus take the wheel kind of thing for Gishath to be good. Uh, it does very much encourage you to play lots and lots and lots and lots of dinosaurs. Um, and you also need to deal a decent amount of damage. So if your opponent's got a established board state, then you're not going to see the top seven cards, which is what a clean hit with Gishath would do. You really want to have as clean a hit as possible with Gishath, so you could go as deep into your deck. Uh, but yeah, we're very much running Dinosaur Tribal, so it's got all the suspects that you might expect. Especially in the top end, we've got the Zakamas and the Golters, Carnage Tyrants. We've got Marauding Raptor and Polyraptor in here, which for those who don't know, is a way that we can draw the game. And I said draw very intentionally. We cannot win with Marauding Raptor plus Polyraptor. We can draw the game. Break Magic Arena. So Marauding Raptor, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to it. And then if it's a dinosaur dealt this way, then it gets plus two plus O. Oh. Polyraptor says whenever it's dealt damage, it creates a token of Polyraptor. So when that token enters, Marauding Raptor hits that token, which then triggers the Enrage again. And we make infinite Polyraptors and an infinitely powered Marauding Raptor. The only problem is we have no way to stop that loop outside of, I guess, Reckless Rage if it's had some damage dealt to it. But that's really about it. Um, so we can draw the game that way if there's no hope for us to win then that's one way we can do it. Um, but yeah, it's really all about uh, ramping into Gishath, hitting our opponent with some big boys, hopefully building up a big board and seeing what we can do. But yeah, it's very, uh, very mediocre because it relies on some low interactivity uh, as far as ramp into Gishath is concerned. We're not really going to be interacting with our opponent all that much in the early game. We're just going to be ramping and then Gishath's just going to be pumping out big things later down the line. So... Um, we do have a little bit of uncounterability in Carnage Tyrant and Shifting Ceratops, so we have a little bit of game against Counter Magics, but honestly, so little bit of uh, Counter Synergy, I imagine Counter Tribal is just going to win the game against us, but who knows. Without further ado though, let's get into some gameplay. If you do enjoy the content, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks. This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button below the video or check out the Patreon link down in the description below. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Alrighty then, we're in, and I quite like the look of this hand actually. Uh, it's got some interesting cards that I'm not too pleased with, and the ramp isn't quite there, but I think Ripjaw Raptor and Reckless Rage make for some very good cards nonetheless. And the mana base is actually pretty decent, it's turn 1 gate, turn 2 mountain, turn 3 untapped retreat. So yeah, it's really only needing another green source which Commune could get us, or even an early play, so I like this one. We're up against Alayla, Artful Provocateur, 1 and Esper Colors for a 2-3 Flying Death Touch Lifelink. Other creatures you control with flying get plus 1 plus 0, and whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, you create a 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. So very much a spam artifacts and enchantments out kind of strategy for our opponent. Let's see if they can manage to do that. So, what do we want to see? I think we just want to get all the mana docks, to be honest. There's Ranging Raptors, which goes very well with Reckless Rage. He's a mana dock, after all, in that roundabout fashion. I think we're just going to go with Commune and see what we can find. Um, hmm. 
So we already have Ranging Raptors next turn with Reckless Rage to kill a Layla. So this Allosaurus could be used as a bit of removal, but I might also be interested in just having another land. I guess I've already got the 4 for the Ripjaw Raptor, and I can just normal cast this 4-4 four, four for 5. Yeah, I guess so. Alright. So hopefully our opponent hasn't kept a hand with colorless lands in it. <laughs> They haven't, but the mana base is definitely very greedy. Alright. Well, in that case, we're just going to go Forest and Ranging Raptors. Not sure whether or not we'd want to Reckless Rage on Ripjaw Raptor or Ranging Raptors. This one draws us a card, and this one ramps us up a basic, which obviously works very well for Gishath. Uh, well, I guess what we're doing is just swinging in for two. And we're going to play Ripjaw Raptor. We could get blown out, I guess. Um, buy a kill all kind of spell, but... I think we should be okay, nonetheless. I'm pretty sure our opponent's waiting until they can cast something with Alayla to get immediate value. Because this is a cast trigger, so they can at least get a 1-1 one, one out of it if I do have a removal spell. Which, obviously, I do. So there's a Layla, but they've only got Colorless Land open. That's very interesting. Alright, well, considering I've got this many lands, I think I'm just going to go for the uh, card draw rather than the ramp with Ranging Raptors. Because I'm already making my land drops quite nicely. And there's Rootbound Craig as well, so we're going to get in for 6. Cycle a Tranquil Thicket on end step, perhaps. Could do it now, actually. Could do it now. Yeah, why not? Never know. Might find a two drop. Embercleave. Alright, well that's going to be pretty good. So we can put that on Ripjaw Raptor and swing for ten perhaps. Godfarer's statue is pretty annoying. Uh, but so is my board state. So let's get in with Ripjaw Raptor. Cost reduction. Ticks my entire turn up, but I think getting in for twelve is not too bad at all. Here we go, they're at 9, so they need to answer the board or they're dead. That statue is very, very irritating though. We're going to need to find our um, Thrashing Brontodon for that. Here's a Layla. She has Death Touch, but I have Double Strike, so that's not too bad. Um, yeah, I think we're just swinging. They go to two if they block ranging raptors. We have double strike on the other one, so we're not going to lose anything that way. Yeah, I think this, they're just in an impossible situation now. So I'll take them to one. Virtual two with fountain. And I guess I'll go with circuitous route. Grab gruel guildgate and boros guildgate. That just allows us to do much more with our... Painfully heavy <laughs> costed mana um, permanence here. Yeah, I think this is just a I'm digging because I'm dead kind of situation. I don't imagine they've got an answer here, so let's just swing and win. Alright, well, simple enough. Oh boy, this is likely to be a pretty bad matchup for us, but we do have one uncounterable boy, so... And some uh, early game card filtering while we're doing nothing. I guess I'm going to keep this one. So we're up against Teferi, Hero of Dominari. I'm sure most of you know what this card does by now. Five mana, four loyalty, Planeswalker. You get to tick up, draw a card, and then untap two lands. So, turns him into a three mana walker. Surprise, surprise. Not seen Teferi do that before. Minus three allows you to remove a permanent from the battlefield effectively. We're going to go treasure map here so that we can start trying to flip that for an early game card. Get Carnage Tyrant down early maybe. And then the minus eight says whenever you draw a card you exile a permanent and opponent controls. So um, I think we might as well draw because we're going to ruin the scry anyway with this Evolving Wilds. So let's just crack the Evolving Wilds. Oh, I didn't put a planes in my deck. Bugger, I meant to do that. Alright, well, mountain it is then. 
Yeah, I let the auto um, lands do its thing, but it apparently has only left me with Gruel, because mostly the white is a splash. But still, silly that I don't have at least one planes here. I absolutely should. So we'll keep that in mind for the future. So they got to Ferry next turn. It's not great. But maybe it's manageable, who knows? It's all going to depend on if we can do this Gishath and if they've got a board wipe. That's kind of the problem. I'm sure they can answer this and I'm sure they can answer the board that comes from Gishath as well. So they're just going to pass with Counter Magic open. It's exactly to be expected. I'll just put that to the bottom. And I'm just looking for land drops. I think the more spells I can cast in a single turn, the better. And stomping Ground. So we'll take that. And we will put it into play tapped because we got no three drops and we'll pass the turn. With an upkeep stop set for treasure map, hopefully our opponent just doesn't Teferi minus on it. That would be very annoying. It would actually just leave us with nothing to do. They might blink of an eye or brazen borrow it as well. Also very irritating. It's a horrible matchup. I don't ever see us winning this. We've probably got like a 10% chance of winning and that 10% is our opponent stays with barely any mana to do anything and they've kept a horrible hand and they don't know what's good to counter and they try to counter Carnage Tyrant. Things like that. That's that's where our 10% chance of winning this comes from. Basically, is my opponent bad? Yes, I win. No, I lose. <laughs> It's a very time raveler bouncy treasure map. Let's yep. Yep, yep, yep. Let's just remove that upkeep stop now. I have a plan. And yeah, go back to doing nothing. Play treasure map. Pass the turn. Honestly, I'm tempted to scoop this one up right now. Uh, I feel like playing this out is completely a waste of time, but. We'll see. This up as I go. I'll play it to the extent that we go Carnage Tyrant and they answer it. If they answer this, I leave. That's probably probably what I'm going to do. Because, I mean, it is 16 damage with an Ember Cleave. So, you know, it's a thing. All right, there's Teferi. Let's slow this down. Going to tick up and hold up and counter magic. Whoopee. Alright, let's just do our scrying, Drover, don't care, I think, don't care, don't care. To the bottom with ye. Teferi was on one, I could see playing Drover into Thrash, but he's not, so. Let's keep doing treasure mapping, that's terrible. We also have Shifting Ceratops as well. Which is a thing we can do. I think our opponent will just tuck this treasure map and we'll go back to doing absolutely nothing. I think that's going to be a lose condition as well. So if they minus on treasure map, I'll leave and we'll go to the next game. Because honestly, we're falling so far behind right now and that's definitely a way that we could never get back into this game is just by being completely screwed on uh, mana as well. But they've ticked up, so who knows. How many cards they got in hand? Nine. Good lord. Yeah, nine and at least three of them have to be counter spells. Let's try this. And if you look at my hand, it is not good for counter spells. We've got lots of creature removal. They don't run creatures. Got lots of expensive things that can be countered. They've got counter spells. Got Ember Cleave, which benefits from being instant speed flashed in. They've got three fairy. So there's nothing good, nothing redeemable about this hand in this matchup. Got 10 seconds to play something, and that's also a win condition. Four, five. Oh, Narset, great. I'm gonna leave. Let's go to the next game. Oh my goodness. We're up against quite the cultured deck, if I do say so myself. Uh, this hand looks pretty great. Uh, it's got the white, which I've forgotten to add into my deck yet again. Um, but we do have Beanstalk Giant to get the red, so yeah, I think I'm okay with this. 
Hello, opponent. How goes things? So, our opponent is on a very, very awesome deck, which I'll get to in a second. Let's just go Tranquil Thicket Tapped. Jace Cunning Castaway. Y'all might know him as Shirtless Jace. Uh, three mana for a three loyalty planeswalker when one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player this turn you get to loot uh, we're gonna go with forest treasure map I'm pretty sure we're not gonna do anything with the map though the minus two allows you to make a 2-2 blue illusion creature token with whenever this creature token becomes the target of a spell sacrifice it so that's the way that you get to do your uh, your plus one value and then the minus five is the reason to play this Planeswalker. You get to create two tokens that are copies of Jace Cunning Castaway, except for they're not legendary. Uh, we're going to go with... Uh, this is two mana. So we'd go from three to five or maybe to six. Uh, or we could go from four and have a scry. I guess we could go to four and have a scry. Let's grab a mountain. And then we got treasure map open. So yeah. So Jace is uh, the first inclusion of a planeswalker that got rid of like the uh, the uniqueness rule. Where you could only have one Jace in play at a time. Uh, they changed it, I believe, at the same time that they added Jace. But obviously, uh, this is also a thing. Let's think this through. So yeah, you can have as many Jaces as you like. Alright, so they're just going to tick up and work their way towards the ult. Which is not a great deal we can do about that right now. Which is fantastic. If I was going to lose to any Planeswalker, Shirtless Jace is the way to go. Uh, we're just going to go with Treasure Map again, look for a land drop. And then go Faber or Elder, I think. So there's a land, we draw... Go to our main, play Faber Elder, and watch it get countered, I guess. I do need to pressure the Jaces. Or the Jace I. <laughs> the Jaceses. I'm sure this is just a I'm going to counter your spell because I have three mana and nothing better to do. Yes. Okay. So now they get to ult Jace and then they get two Jaces. Jaceses. Could even put a Jace into the command zone and cast Jace, and then they'll have three Jaces. Crazy stuff. I'm just ramping towards a Gishath, to be honest. I'm hoping that my opponent runs out of counters and I get to slap uh, my opponent in the face with this and then get seven seven dinos out of my deck. We'll see. Ooh, they're going to try keep Jace in play. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that, but... It's a fine play, I guess. We're just going to have more lands. We're going to go Boros Guildgate, and then I think we're just going to play down the Guardian Project. It's matter efficient, doesn't eat my treasures. Card draw could matter. And the treasures are ramped to me, so Mystical Dispute? Uh, no, it's fine. Don't need it. So we've got two cards in the yard, very far away from Search for his Kanta. But tis fine. Alright. All the Jaces. Ooh, contentious plan to proliferate. Nice. Okay. Let's try this. I mean, it's pretty good. We got two ulting Jaces next turn, and I'm sure they got counter magic. Uh so I can play a Gishath. And I can also play Zakama. I think we're going to go with Gishath, because if they don't have a counter spell, it's going to be a big hitting kind of card. And I can still cast it next turn as well. So, no doubt they have a counter spell. It's mono blue. It's literally the only way that they can actually interact with us. Uh, command zone, please. Cost two more, but I've got two more in my treasures. Hopefully we just draw a land. Perfectly happy doing that. Yep, spell pierce in the yard. Digging for a proper counter is what that suggests to me. Although, obviously, we are a creature-heavy deck, so the focus is definitely on finding those kinds of counter spells. Trying not to care about the millions of Jaces. <laughs> but eventually it will be a problem, because now they can make loads of 2-2s and block my Gishath. But I can maybe Ember Cleave and draw my entire deck. 
So we'll see what we want to do here. Floating the colorless. Okay, so they've got two mana left. Now's my time to shine. Hmm. Gishoth's not going to do a great deal, but just having him in play might be worthwhile. Especially since we could potentially just Ember Cleave next turn, and this is probably the best chance I have of actually resolving him. So we're going to go for it. And we managed it. Fantastic. Hello. Hell yeah. Going straight up on his face. I want all the Gishoth triggers. Don't bounce it. Uh, don't do it. Let me hit you. Double block. All right. Spin the wheel. We get to look at the top three and put any dinos into play. Good stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Well, at least we get to Ember Cleave, and then we get to look at the top 16 and put any dinos we see into play. If our opponent doesn't answer this Gishath anyway. Likelihood is it only gets answered by... Um, Bounce spells. I should bring my uh, tracker up. I don't even know if it works. It's not working because Gishath appears to be in my command zone according to this. So I guess it's not working. Is Atali in this prime in this pile? No, actually no. Time of ice. Well, that's annoying. It's how you play the hand of so time of ice taps a creature. And then on the third chapter, it's going to bounce Gishath, so very annoying. Let's try this. Always an answer. Okay, uh, proliferator. Oh dear. Ooh, we do have Golty. Golty ain't bad. Uh, we can also Zakama first, which I think we absolutely should. Well, it's got two mana again. They couldn't answer Gishath last time. So Zakama comes down, allows me to untap my manners. Uh, we can then go Golty. Boom. Uh, let's go. Does this come into play tapped? It does. Uh, I think that might as well be a thing we do. Uh, reveal a dino. Atali. Grab a forest. And how much money have I got? Three. Okay. So we're just going to shoot down the informant, I think. Actually, no, we want to... We want to get Gishath, don't we? So I want to destroy the Time of Ice. I guess we should do it now. Time of Ice. I'm trying to select it. There we go. I'm just going to let them do their JC thing, because Ember Cleave is a thing. And we could Ember Cleave up Galta for what is likely to be the win. But I'm really not interested in doing that, because I've got a Gishath that I could be Ember Cleaving. So I'd like to swing with everything and then Ember Cleave Gishath, and then look at the top 16 cards in my deck and put any number of uh, of dinosaurs into play. That's, that's really what I want to do with my time. As Canter, digging for an answer. Please, no counter spells. Please, no rivers rebukes. Flood of Tears is fine because they've made loads of tokens. They'd have to reset the board. Entrancing Melody. They can't really do anything with that. That's not exactly the, uh, <laughs> the mana cost of cards you want to be digging for. Um, yeah, so I think we're okay there. They can make two more JSI. To make lots and lots and lots of lots of blockers. But they're gonna need lots and lots and lots and lots of blockers, because uh, we got a big board. Ugh, Flood of Tears. Alright, back to my hand, Gishath. Unclaimed territory on Dinosaur. And then we get to go Gishath. 
Swing for seven. I just want a Gishath. If there's any other play that's correct, I don't want to hear it. All right. I mean, just look at this. Just look at this. It's almost just a shame that Gishath on his own is going to actually kill my opponent with Embercleave. I hope they put down enough blockers where I can actually get the double strike in without the game just ending it. Entrancing Melody, my Gishath. That'll, uh, that'll be a problem. They finally had the mana for it. What do you do now, though? You swing in and hit me for seven. Uh, I think I'm fine with that. They're obviously not going to hit anything here. I get to see a good chunk of their deck. Yeah, it's all counter spells and mass bounce. Okay. So we're going to go Zakama. Uh, we want to have full control. Because i got some manners to float here. And untap. Then we've got Galti. Yeah, pay the green. Take full control ward off now. Then we got Rip Jory. Draw a card. Unseely. Ooh. Very good. Good game. Let's go. What do we get? Drover and a counter spell. Yes. Resolve. Why? Asserting dominance. Asserting dominance. It's the first time I've seen Atale have two castables. Usually it's two lands. That's been my experience. Alright. Really fun matchup. It's a shame we couldn't double strike up Gishath. I wanted to really just absolutely flood this board with value, but you know what? That was equally flooded with value, I would say. So I'm happy with that. All right, guys. Well, it's going to be a little bit of a short video today, but hopefully you enjoyed it. This deck is, as it may look, pretty mediocre. Um, you definitely want to go as a Karma, I think, rather than Dinosaur Tribal. I think Dinosaur Tribal is just too weak. There's not enough cards uh, to really justify making this deck. Uh, but it is fun. It's got lots of options. And you know what? When you get a good Gishath, you can be really happy with yourselves, but yeah, it's pretty fun. We even have uh, the way to draw the game as well with uh, Polyraptor and Marauding Raptor, so we're all in it for the memes, <laughs> if it's not immediately obvious. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you did. Leave a comment down below what you would do with your deck, what you're playing right now. Let me know. If you've got any uh, deck suggestions as well for when Ikoria comes out, make sure to go over to the announcement video that I posted yesterday. Uh, to submit decks for the Jank Stravaganza that's coming up on Wednesday the 15th of April. Uh, go check out the details for that. I'm going to be uh, joining the sponsored Early Access Ikoria streamer event. So for all the details there, go to that video. And yeah, without further ado, I'm going to end it off here. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.